The year is 1990. It has been two years since the mysterious disappearance of Edward Crow and the abrupt closure of his theme park. Following rumours and a reported sighting of the enigmatic Mr. Crow, Mara Forrest sets off on a quest for answers. In order to discover the truth, Mara will have to delve into a twisted landscape of forgotten dreams and lingering shadows. This is Crow Country. Crow Country beckons with a nostalgic embrace, immediately recognisable as an homage to the original PlayStation era. The game successfully merges the blocky character models of Final Fantasy VII with the spine-chilling combat, puzzles and haunting environment aesthetics of titles such as Resident Evil and Silent Hill. As players explore the dilapidated theme park, they'll uncover sinister secrets, search for key items, solve intricate puzzles, and ensure they don't fall victim to the park's plethora of grotesque occupants. Let's dive a little deeper into each of the game's core elements. The combat system in Crow Country is simple and accessible, designed to be easily grasped by anyone. The game offers two control schemes, a classic option reminiscent of Resident Evil that utilises the controller's face buttons, and a modern option that utilises the controller's triggers for primary actions. While Crow Country can be played with a mouse and keyboard, it is clearly designed to be played with a controller. The combat system also includes a risk versus reward element, where weapons deal more damage at closer ranges, but the players face a higher risk of being overwhelmed by enemies. Headshots also inflict additional damage, adding depth to encounters and encouraging strategic aiming. However, some enemies have erratic and unpredictable movement patterns, keeping players on edge and requiring vigilance during combat. You won't have to worry about running out of ammo for too long either, as the game uses a dynamic difficulty system that ensures ammo and health pickups drop based on how desperately the player needs them. As players progress through the game, bigger and badder obstacles start to stand between Mara and her quest for answers, including tougher enemies and environmental hazards such as chandeliers that are likely to punish players caught unaware. Luckily, diligent players will be able to unlock some additional firepower, as three unlockable firearms are hidden throughout the park. If all of this sounds a little overwhelming, then exploration mode might be more your style, as this game mode removes all enemies and environmental hazards and allows the player to experience the story in a less stressful environment. The puzzles in Crow Country stick to the classic survival horror formula, tasking players with hunting for key items and deciphering logic puzzles to progress through the game. While these puzzles aren't intended to be as complex as those found in point-and-click adventure games, they may leave some players wanting more of a challenge. In my experience, I found that the vast majority of puzzles in Crow Country were too easy to solve, often accompanied by multiple documents scattered throughout the park that provided overly helpful hints that practically solved the puzzles themselves, rather than offering subtle guidance. While this does ensure smooth progression through the game, it also detracts from the sense of accomplishment that comes with overcoming more challenging puzzles. Some cynical viewers may say, just don't read the documents, in order to avoid puzzle spoilers, but a lot of the documents contain important plot details, and there's no discernible difference between the plot documents and puzzle solution documents. Implementing a difficulty selection system akin to other survival horror games would have provided players with the option to tailor the puzzle difficulty to their preferences, enhancing the overall experience. The developers have clearly put thought into other areas of the game to make it appeal to a wider audience, so it's a little puzzling as to why this was overlooked. The story in Crow Country captivates players with its well-crafted narrative and intriguing plot developments. For example, stumbling upon a journal entry can add key details to Edward Crow's mysterious disappearance, slowly uncovering the overarching mystery and encouraging players to piece together the puzzle at their own pace. The absence of any drawn-out exposition or lore dumps ensures the players are never overwhelmed while maintaining a tight, direct and consistent plot progression. As the story reaches its climax, the finale feels justified and seamlessly integrated into the narrative, avoiding any sense of confusion or feeling out of place. 
Without spoiling too much, the finale also encourages a second playthrough in order to spot certain plot details that may have seemed mundane the first time through the game, but make much more sense upon a second viewing, which I really enjoy. Best of all, the story also feels complete. No loose ends or questions left unanswered. In conclusion, Crow Country delivers a compelling and atmospheric adventure for fans of survival horror that you can expect to spend between 5-6 to six hours with on your first playthrough with incentive to play through multiple times. The combat system is engaging with a touch of risk versus reward, while puzzles, though not overly challenging, contribute to the game's immersive experience. The well-crafted story unfolds gradually, seamlessly integrating plot details and culminating in a satisfying finale. A huge thank you to SFB Games and Neon Hive for providing early access to Crow Country, and as always, a huge thank you to you, the viewer, for listening to me waffle on about video games. Please consider subscribing to help the channel grow, and stay tuned for more video game reviews. See you next time!